The Christians in Macedonia were just like us. They were believers like us. They had great financial needs like us as well. But out of those needs, they decided that they would want to lay all their resources, all their financial resources at the disposal of the, 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 the apostles so that the work of God can continue. This evening, I want to challenge you. You might have decided on how much you want to give this evening, but you are being challenged. Like, learn from the examples of the churches in the Macedonia, and then give generously and joyously to build the kingdom of God on earth. For the Bible tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. God loves a cheerful giver. And as, as I have said, nobody gives to God and God never repays. Hallelujah. Once you give generously from your heart, willingly, joyously, he will surely repay you. Abundantly, he will press it down. He will shake it over. It will run. That is what God will do for you. You may have needs, financial needs. You haven't paid your school, the children's school fees. You have health needs. That is why you are here this evening. God is here to heal you. So forget about all those needs. Just trust him. Give all your all to him this evening. And you'll be amazed of the blessings that God will pour upon you in diverse ways. Hallelujah. So this evening, as we put the bowl before you, just give generously to support God's work. We see all the things we have here. It costs money. It costs money. So God is calling you this evening that give to support his kingdom work so that his kingdom will be built on earth. May God's grace abound towards us and as we have been exalted and as we have been, we have learned from the churches in Macedonia who would also do likewise and the Lord will bless us. He will return a good harvest to us. He will come after our needs. He will come after our lacks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God will come after our needs and after our lack. So we want to take the offering now. We want to give the offering. So praise team, please take it up. And I want to inform you that this program is live on Facebook and on YouTube. So we are live now. We are live. Just take notes. Hallelujah. We want to take our offering now.
Amen. We've come to the most important part of your coming here, the reason why you came. But this evening we are privileged. We don't just have our lead pastor here, we'll surely see him. But we also have the mama of the house. Hallelujah. Mama the sea. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep doing it. Give honor to whom honor is due. Hallelujah. Amen. The mama of the house. She's really a mother. She carries all of us, both old and young. Hallelujah. Mama, God bless you. God bless you. As I said, we want to enter into the best time of the program. I want to read a scripture. John chapter 12, verse 21. It said, they went to Philip, who came from the village of Bethsaida in Galilee. And they asked him, would you take us to see Jesus? We want to see him. Say, I want to see Jesus. This evening, tonight you have come because you want to see Jesus. I expect every movement to seize at this juncture, except those who are working. Begin to talk to the Lord right now. Tell the Lord you have come before him. You want to see him. Many people came to Jesus for several reasons. The sick came to him. The man who was at the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years also came. Tonight, whatever the problem is, talk to the Lord about it. Tell the Lord you want to see Jesus. Tell him you want to see Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here. Tell the Lord, Father, I want to see you. You are the reason I have come. I haven't come because somebody just invited me. I heeded and yielded to the invitation because I want to see you. Father, tonight let me not live here the same. Tonight let me not live here the same. Let me not live here the same. You want to continue in prayer? You want to tell the Holy Spirit to prepare your heart that your heart can receive. Your heart can pa participate in everything that will go on here. There will be no distraction. You want to see Jesus. Nothing must stop you. Nothing must distract you. Nothing must obstruct you. You just want to see. I just want to see Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, this evening we are grateful. We thank you that you have brought us here. Father, we have come because we want to see you. Lord, we ask that you work in us. You work on our hearts. Let our hearts yield to you. Even as our pastor take over, let the anointing, the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit manifest in the name of Jesus. We know we will not live here the same. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Give a round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. So with a standing ovation, let's welcome our papa, Pastor Paul Nana Asma. Hallelujah. The lead pastor of Life Center International. Hallelujah. Amen. Do it better. Keep doing it. Keep doing it unto the Lord. Keep doing it unto the Lord. Honor the man of God. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Father. Hallelujah. We give you worship. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Just say glory. Glory. Say glory. Glory. Say glory. Oh, the glory of the Lord is here. It's just evident the glory of the Lord is just all around us. God is just a good God. God is just a great God. Now the Holy Spirit is in charge. The Holy Spirit is already in charge. The Holy Spirit has already taken charge. Just raise up your right hand. And say, Holy Spirit, just close your eyes. 
Say, Holy Spirit, I have come. Tonight I have come. I have come. I have opened my heart. I want you to touch me. I want you to minister to me. As I minister to you. Holy Spirit. This is your service. This is your service. And I surrender to you. And I give all to you. And I yield all to you. I recognize you. As the Lord over this meeting. Your word says. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the Lord is. There is freedom. So tonight. There is freedom. There is healing. There is deliverance. There is restoration. There is forgiveness of sin. There is salvation. There is salvation. There is repentance. The goodness of God is all around. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I bless you, Father. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Hallelujah. You know, in time is past when we've just opened your eyes and look at me and let's, let me minister to you a little bit. In prophetic worship and healing services like, like, like this one, people have come with burdens and the burdens have been rolled away. You know, they've come with terminal sicknesses and they've been healed. They've come with you no know, challenges that they wouldn't have enough vocabulary to describe. And the Lord has done it. Tonight is no exception. He will do it. He will do it. Every Goliath that has been sent against you, tonight it will be defeated. Every weapon that the enemy has raised up against you that you have been battling with and you have been struggling with I want you to understand that tonight is your night I want you to believe that tonight is your night let me read a scripture it says in um, in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 16 let, let me use the, the good news translation. It says, Goliath challenged the Israelites every morning and evening for 40 days. Goliath challenged the Israelites every morning and evening for 40 days. Whatever has been sent to humiliate you Whatever has been sent to challenge you, whatever has been sent to defile you, God will make you clean. Whatever is your challenge, I want you to understand that the greater one is here. I want you to understand that the presence of God is capable of meeting that need. There is no need that can come before God that can resist the word of God. The only thing that is irresistible is the word of God. And the word of God is going to come tonight and you're going to receive the word of God and your life is going to be changed. Your story will be different. Something different will be said about you. The narrative about you will be different. Just take God by his word. Praise God. You know, whatever has de denied you of your blessing that you've been praying over and over and over tonight there will be a showdown. Amen. I said there will be a showdown. Amen. There will be a showdown. 
There will be a showdown with the devil. Praise God. That is God for you. Now David was getting ready to, to into this battle. And David used words. Words of faith. To conquer Goliath. Goliath, according to Bible history, was about 11 feet and 2 inches. Twice my height. Bigger than mine, about two and a half times my size. He was a huge man. Not a man. He was a huge warrior. He had fought from his youth. And he had won battles. But when he met his match, there was a Waterloo. There will be a Waterloo tonight. Amen. I said there will be a Waterloo tonight. Amen. There will be a Waterloo tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. When Goliath, Goliath met his match, the story changed. It is written in 1 Samuel chapter 17 again and verse 45. You come against me with a dagger, spear, and sword. But I come against you in the name of Yahweh of hosts. The God of Israel's armies. You have defiled him. That was David speaking. He was speaking where David spoke words of faith long before he started the battle. In spiritual warfare, you start the fight with words. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said praise God. Hallelujah. I said praise God. Hallelujah. You start the fight with words. And we will start this fight with words. But the battle is already over because we have already won. Praise the Lord. Come on, give him a round of applause. Give him a shout. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, when Goliath spoke, the Israelites ran helter-skelter. And they hid themselves in caves. And the soldiers were running. And the civilians were running. But there came a boy called David. And he changed the narrative. Your story will change tonight. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, lift up your right hand. Like I said, David started a fight with words. He spoke words of faith. He declared words of faith and something miraculous happened. Goliath, the, um, the captain, the champion was killed. Look, Goliath, Goliath was a very strong man. The description the Holy Spirit gives Goliath in the Bible is profound. He said a champion came from Gath. But there's a bigger champion here. I said there's a bigger champion here. There is a bigger champion here. A champion might have come from your village. A champion might have come from your office. A champion might have come from your school. A champion might have come from your community. But there's a bigger champion here. Praise the Lord. He said the champion came from God. But the shepherd boy defeated him. Oh, give the Lord a round of applause. Give the Lord a loud shout. A loud shout. Look, I want to tell you, you can't fail. Tell the person standing next to you, you can't fail. It is not just talk. It is power. You can't fail. Because God can fail. And God won't fail you. Praise God. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. It is written in your word. That as many as received him. 
has received him. To them he gave the power to become sons of God. Even to those who believed on his name. So I boldly declare that I am what God says I am. What God says I am. I am one of his beloved children. I am one of his beloved children. It is written in your word. It is written in your word. Faithful is he who has called you. Faithful is he who has called you. And he will also do it. And he will also do I it. I boldly declare. I boldly declare. I will not fail. I will not fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Because you are faithful. Because you are faithful. And you will carry me through. And you will carry me through. To the end. To the end. It is written in your word. It is written in your word. They overcame him. They overcame him. By the blood of the lamb. By the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And by the word of their testimony. So tonight. So tonight. I declare. I declare. By the precious blood of Jesus. By the precious blood of Every Jesus. incantation. Every incantation. Every curse. Every curse. Every magic. Every magic. Every sorcery. Every sorcery. Every negative word. Every negative word. That has been spoken against me. That has been spoken against me. That has been spoken against my family. That has been spoken against my family. That has been spoken against my destiny. That has been spoken against my destiny. I declare. I declare. Null and void. Null and void. I declare. I declare. Null and void. Null and void. Null and void. Null by the precious blood of Jesus, no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Now look on the floor. And then in your mind, imagine you are drawing a line. So look on the floor and make this confession. Say, Father God, today, the 1st of April, 2021, I draw a line. I draw a line. I draw a dividing line. I draw a dividing line. And I declare. And I declare. Today. Today. I will go over. I will go over. I will cross over. I will cross over. I will jump over. I will jump over. I will leap over. I will leap over. And my past will be my past. And my past will be my past. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I have come. I have come. I ask you to show me. I ask you to show me. Show me Jesus. Show me Jesus. You are my friend, Holy Spirit. You are my friend, Holy Spirit. You are my helper, Holy Spirit. You are my helper, Holy Spirit. Help me. Help me. I want to meet Jesus. 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 I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to meet Jesus. I want to meet Jesus. Close your eyes. Father, we thank you so much. It's such a delight to come before you, Father. It's such an honor to, to stand before you. And I praise you, Father. And I glorify you. Holy Spirit, you are the Lord over this meeting. And I'm asking that you will glorify Jesus, the captain of our salvation, the bread of life, the Alpha and the Omega. The one who was and is and is to come. The one by whom all things were made. That without him, nothing was made. And all things were made by him, through him and for him. You will glorify the captain of our salvation. And Father, when Jesus is glorified, I'm asking that you will also be glorified in Jesus. That you will do the work of healing. You will do the work of forgiveness. You will do the work of restoration. You will do the work of joy. You will restore joy in the hearts of your people again. Holy Spirit, take over. Take my words. Take my voice. Take my personality and take every heart over here captive. We have surrendered 
For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, where you, you are made the Lord, there is liberty. This evening, I declare that I have made you Lord. I have called you Lord. I have honored you as the Lord of this meeting. That you will glorify the bread of life. You will glorify the light of this world. You will glorify the desire for all nations. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Our doctor, our physician, our healer, you will glorify him. I plead the precious blood of Jesus over every situation. Satan, I take authority. You will not operate in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare as, not, as far as my voice would go, I disrupt every territorial activity of demons. I disrupt every territorial and heavenly activities of demons. Thank you for the host of angels. Praise God. The host of heaven is already around. Oh, the host of heaven has been released. Thank you, the host of heaven. Angels have taken positions. As far as my voice will go, even on the, on the web, as far as I can, they can hear me, I disrupt every activity of the enemy. And Jesus will be glorified. Jesus will be glorified. Thank you, Father. I bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a round of applause. You know, God wants you to honor him. God wants you to honor Jesus. And God wants you to honor the Holy Spirit. We'll learn more about the Holy Spirit as I teach the word. He says, and walking among the lampstands, I saw someone like a son of man wearing a full length robe with a golden sash over his chest. His head and hair were white as wool, white as glistening snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were gleaming like bright metal as though they were glowing in a fire and his voice was like the roar of many many rushing waters in his right hand he held seven stars and out of his mouth was a sharp double edged sword and his face his face was shining like the brightness of the blinding sun. That is the reason why we are here. This is a description the Holy Spirit gives about the captain of our salvation. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Just meditate on the Lord. 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 You are beautiful beyond description. To marvelous for words. To wonderful.
above all else. Above all persons. I choose you. I choose you. By my own choice. I choose you. My heart belongs to you. My heart belongs to you. Why you go, I will go. Why you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Your God will be my God. My heart belongs to you, Father. Come on, come on, come on. We are people of God. Where you go, I go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. Your God. Father God, I surrender. My heart belongs to you. My heart belongs to you. It's a moment of surrender, I tell you. It's a moment of surrender.
I give you my heart I give you my soul Every breath that I take Every moment I'm away Lord, I Your way In me, oh God Lord, I give you My heart I give you my soul For you alone I will live for Father. With every breath that I take. Mama, mama, mama. Every moment that I am awake. Lord, have your way. 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 This is the end, I pray. This is the end. Hey, Jesus.
very air that I breathe, oh God. You are my oxygen, my sunrise and my sunset. You are my sunshine, the joy. You are my delight, oh God. The very one I have. Apart from you, there is nothing that what I can do. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The master of creation. The master of creation. Lord Jesus, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. Without you, where do I go from here? I'm lost without you, oh God. Mama, 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 mama. Where do I go from here? Where do I go from here, oh God? I'm lost without you. If it hadn't been for your love, more, 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 more. Mama, 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 mama. Oh, thank you for your rain. It is raining. Just lift up your hands and receive it. It is raining. The Holy Ghost is raining. It is raining. It is raining. Yes. It is raining. It is raining. Oh, it is raining. The Holy Ghost is raining. It is raining. The rain of freshness. The rain of cleansing. The rain of restoration and healing. It is raining again. It is raining. It is raining. It is raining in the house. It is raining. All those that are watching live, it is raining. It is raining. It is raining. The rains have come. The rains have come. I call it. Oh, I'm lost without. the rain. Thank you for the rain. The Lord has already started healing. He's touching somebody with a, with a pain in the ear. God has already started healing. Someone with pain in the ear. You've lived with this pain for a long while. It has affected to some extent your hearing reign of God is healing. The reign of God is healing. The reign of God is healing. The reign of God is healing. It's like, it, it appears like you are carrying something on your shoulders. The burdens are rolling away. The burdens are rolling away. You, you feel it physically that you used to carry something on your shoulder. The burdens are rolling away. The burdens are rolling away. It is raining. 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 You're receiving a burning sensation in your breasts. God is touching you. God is touching your breasts. God is touching your breasts. God is touching your breasts. Touching your breasts. Touching your breasts. Yes. Yes. God is touching your breast. God is touching your breast. Casa Katabari. Oh, Shakaka. This is not the work of man. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Kala Baba. We love you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. I'm desperate for you. Desperate for you.
for a long while you felt like you were going to die suddenly joy has come into your heart the spirit of suicide is gone the spirit of suicide is gone you felt like you were going to die the spirit of suicide is gone the spirit of suicide is gone you can sense the joy of the Lord in your hearts God is ministering to you Baka Sakatali Baba Kala Baba Baba and you couldn't bend now you can bend you can bend you couldn't bend it you couldn't bend because of your back now you can bend healing has taken place healing has taken place healing has taken place healing has taken place you can bend 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 praise the lord praise the lord come on have your seats Give the Lord a round of applause. Give him a shout. Before I close, briefly we'll take testimonies. You know, some of those who have been touched by the power of God. Say power of God. Just raise up your hand and say it's raining. Raise up, raise up both hands and say it is raining. And I receive the rain of God. Praise God. Come on, give me a round of applause. Let me quickly um, teach a little bit about the captain of our salvation. Some Greeks were among those who came to worship during the Passover festival. They went to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and told him, Sir, we would like to meet Jesus. Praise the Lord. They went to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, and told him, Say, we would like to meet Jesus. Now, the other rendering of what I just read is what they said was that we would like to converse with Jesus, not just meet him. They said, they, they, they came to, you know, to Philip and said, Philip, we would like to converse with Jesus. And that tells you that suddenly they, they knew a little bit about Jesus. They must have heard about his miracles, or his healing miracles. They must have heard about, you know, the, the word, thoughts. And this was, you know, at a pilgrimage. Thousands and thousands had come from all over. From the east and the west and the south and the north. It's like a, the, the Passover feast, you know, which is a, is a pilgrimage that brings in a, a, a lot of people. It's like a, an, an annual convention, what we do in, in Ghana and I know, in Christendom, where maybe what we're doing now, and there are several conventions, Easter conventions going on all, all around in Ghana, scattered all around and in the world. So these had come. They had traveled all the way from the west. And they had come to Jerusalem. They must have heard something about Jesus. And they wanted to converse with him. Tonight, that must be your desire. They wanted to know Jesus more intimately. They must have, might have seen his miracles from afar. They hadn't gotten that relationship yet. Otherwise, they would have walked to Jesus by themselves. But they couldn't go. So they went to Philip. But we want to converse. We want to develop a closer relationship with Jesus. That should be our attitude. Tonight, tomorrow, and forever. God wants to work on your heart that you'll be so yearning. You'll be so passionate. You will relentlessly pursue him. You would want to know the Lord of Lords. Not 
not just know him by name, but know him by your relationship. You want to know the one who walked on the, on the shorelines of Galilee and healed the sick. You want to come into a, a personal encounter with him. And when you call upon him, he will answer. You want to know him so close as your close friend. And when you, when, you, when you discuss issues with him, they are so personal. You can share the, your heart of hearts with him. That was what the G Greeks were looking for. But they didn't have that. So they went to Philip saying, we would like to converse with Jesus. They wanted more of koinonia. They wanted more of fellowship with the person whom when you, you relate to at the mention of his name every knee shall bow. The person who has the highest name in the supreme court in heaven. The woman you go take your case to the courts of heaven and the judge of all spirits and men, the Father God, sits down hearing your case. And the Holy Ghost gives you witness. And you call on him as your advocate. And you are my lawyer, Jesus. You will have to defend me. For Goliath has pursued me for long. And he will raise up his hand like he did in the boats. The stormy waters will stop. The stormy waters will stop in your life. The nightmares will stop. The bad dreams will stop. The barrenness in your family will end. The sickness will end. That terminal sickness will be healed. Praise the Lord. He said, I am the light of this world. You want to know him. The man so filled with compassion. The blind by Timius sat by the Jericho highway and cried, son of David, I've grown old. The years have elapsed. I'm still blind. What's going to happen to me? The devil kept telling him, he will suddenly go to your grave a blind man. Even though this man is in Israel, he will not be healed. Then he heard the news that someone was passing by. He said, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Compassion stopped Jesus. Compassion stopped Jesus. And he turned. He would turn toward you. He will turn toward you in your career. You've been failing in school. You're a Christian, but you're not making the grade. And you'll be wondering, how come those who don't call upon the name of the Lord are doing more excellently than you? He will turn toward you. He will turn toward the subjects where you are struggling to understand and grasp. Because he's your wisdom. He's your resurrection. He's your redemption. He's your forgiveness. He's your love. He's your power. Praise the Lord. Years back, I guess I was about 10 years old. I can't remember very well. But we went on an expedition. About four or five of us, you know, we're going to hunt for three branches. Because we're going to build a Christmas hut. Bonya tree. We went into a, a far off place. I didn't even tell my parents I was going out. I sneaked out and went. Whilst we were in the bush, up nowhere, there was a place of nowhere, holding our machetes, we were harvesting branches from nim trees. Then a, a man started walking toward us. I was wondering, where is this man coming from? So we all looked at the man, 
and everybody took to his heels. Hey. Suddenly I realized that the group scattered. And the man was targeting me. He was coming after me and I was running. And I remembered. And I remembered. And I remembered the name my mom taught me when I was growing. The name of Jesus. In my desperation, I shouted, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. All I read out was that the man was receding. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And suddenly I was out of the of his, you know, reach. And I couldn't find my friends. I said, what's happening? Then we all came together. I said, hey, that man was following you. <laughs> I'm sure I was going to be for supper. <laughs> then they, asked, they said, what happened? I said, I don't know. I just shouted Jesus. And I shouted Jesus. And Jesus. Let's say it. And Jesus. And Jesus. And Jesus. And Jesus. And Jesus. And Jesus. The name that is above every name. The name that is registered in the supreme court of heaven. At the mention of that name, every knee shall bow. So I had an encounter with the name of Jesus at a very tender age. And it has lived with me and it must live with you. You want to know the one whom when you call at night. When you have a nightmare and you open your eyes and you see images. Not You are not hallucinating, no. But real demons have come and they want to attack you. And you are paralyzed with fear. And only one word, Jesus, will scatter the group. That is the person you want to know. We would like to converse with Jesus. We would like to meet Jesus. They went to Philip. One person, one very important person, who can take you on and take you to Jesus and show you who Jesus is and show you his love, his compassion, his goodness, his kindness, his mercy and all the good things about him and show you the authority in his name, the name above every name. At the mention of that name, every altar will bow. And I decree that wherever any altar has been raised against you, there is a bowing. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every altar raised against you, every magic, every divination, every enchantment, every incantation will not survive. Praise the Lord. David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to use that name. You need that relationship with Jesus. You need it. And you, you will experience that relationship when you first start developing intimacy, closeness, Fellowship, koinonia, with my friend, the Holy Spirit. Three times before Jesus departed. In his discourse with the disciples, he was telling them what was about to happen. They were very sad. Of course, your leader is leaving. You know, you're not sure of what, what was going to happen. The Jewish leaders were too hostile and aggressive toward Jesus Christ. They wanted to eliminate him. So if Jesus would, would be eliminated, how much less the disciples? They would be. So they were scared. Jesus saw their, 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 their countenance. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in me. Believe also in God. Believe in me. 
He started encouraging them. But they still said, but we want, you know, you're going to leave us physically. You're going to go away. We understand that, yes, we must believe in you. But physically, you're going to go away. How do we do it? I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you comfortless. As I go, I will send you another savior. Another comforter. Another helper. Another intercessor. Another standby. In John chapter 4, 14 and verse 16 and 17. And I will, Jesus said, and I will ask the father. The TPT. Give me the TPT. John 14, 16, 17. And I will ask the father. And he will give you another savior. Another comforter. Another helper. He will help you. And I will ask the father. And he will give you another savior. The Holy Spirit of truth. Who will be to you a friend. Just like me. And he will never leave you. The world can't receive him. Because they can't see him or know him. But you know him. Intimately. Say intimately. Say again intimately. Because he remains with you. Three times. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the one. Who will reveal. The personality of Jesus to you. He will open your eyes. He will increase your tests. He will energize your pursuit after God. So the spirit of truth, he will lead you. He will guide you. He will comfort you. He will strengthen you. When you stand before demons, it's not your pastor's name that is going to drive out the demons. Did you hear that? It's not your mother's name or your father's name. Yes, you might have a great name in society. That's okay. It's not a bad idea. It's good. You might be very prominent in society. But when you stand against dark angels, there is only one name that makes the difference. The name of Jesus. Give the Lord a round of applause. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter where you, you were raised. It, nothing matters. All that matters is that you know that name intimately, very closely. That you can relate to that name. And the Holy Spirit is the one who will show you the compassion of Jesus. He will show you his goodness. He will show you his kindness. He will show you his love. The story is told about, about Smith Wigglesworth, the apostle of faith. That one day he went to minister to someone who was ill on a, on a deathbed. I thought the person was going to die. And as he was ministering, you know, the Holy Spirit told him, just let everybody there shout Jesus. Jesus. He said, ah, this one too. I've come to lay hands Jesus, Jesus. So he wasn't ready to do that. The Holy Spirit said, you just shout, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So he asked that, oh, come on, let's hold our hands together. So they held their hands together. He said, let's say it together. Jesus, 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 Jesus. The more they, they kept saying, the more the man started rising from the dead bed. And it was coming up. 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 And he sat down. The name Jesus. You need an encounter with that name. It doesn't matter how long that curse has reigned in that family. It doesn't matter how long that curse has reigned in that community. It doesn't matter how long that curse has gained mastery over the servants. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You need that encounter. Otherwise, your Christianity will be a farce. Nobody will believe you. 
Because you talk about it, they don't see it in your life. You discuss it, yes. They don't see it in your life. No. Yesterday, one of our partners, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday when John T came there? The day before yesterday, one of our partners came to see us to do some work for us. Then he said, Papa, there's something I've been telling you. You have to come back to the house. I said, for what? He said, no, no, you have to come back. I said, to do what? He said, I've told, you know, but Eben, I need to speak to you again. I'm about to finish the house and you must come there again. I said, come and do what? He said, Papa, I don't even remember, but he said, do you remember when he, he had told me that land guards, he had bought a piece of property and land guards were harassing him. Anytime he goes on that property, the Satan will send demons as land guards against him. They will drive away all his workers, the work will stop. They will, they, will, they, will, they will mess him up. And he said it went on and on and on. Then the Holy Spirit said, come and tell Papa to pray for you. So I, I went. I said, where is the land? So we went and we stood on the land. And we looked, I looked around and I think I saw something like a stone. I said, ah, let's take some object on the land. So we picked a piece of stone. Then we prayed and I prayed over it. I said, from today, anybody who comes on that land will be arrested. I'm, you know, when I said it, he looked at me like a, a sheep. Because, I mean, land guards have been tormenting him for, for months and for years. You come and stand there and you say, you pick the, a stone and you say, you drop the stone on the land and you tell him that anybody who comes on the land will be arrested. And lo and behold, the next day he went on the land. The land guards came. He called the police. This time when the policemen came and arrested them. But the name of Jesus is the key. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the one who knows your future. He knows who you are supposed to marry. He knows the children you are supposed to raise as recorded in your book in heaven. He knows the place where you are supposed to work. He knows the church you are supposed to fellowship. You don't just get up and go to any church, you know. In the destiny of your creation, your destiny is tied to a place. Your destiny is tied to a location. God said to Abraham, get up of your, your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. That is where your destiny will be fulfilled. Destinies are tied to locations. Amen? You don't just get up and say, no, that's all right. I mean... You can't do anything anyhow. You just can't get up and go and work anywhere you want to work, no. You just can't get up and marry any person you want to marry, no. You just can't get up and go to any church you want to go to. You must be led. The Holy Spirit is the one who will lead you because he already knows your future. One Greek scholar, Rick Renner, says that, you know, a very beautiful description of the Holy Spirit is that it's not an, I'm not using it you know, abusively, but he's a tour guide. When you go on a tour and you, you want to do the tour yourself, well, it's okay, you can do it yourself. But you wouldn't see a lot of places of interest because the tour guide knows much more than you. You can use the, the map of the area, visit places. You wouldn't even have the history behind the, the sites you visit. But when you are with a tour guide, he knows what is ahead. And he will tell you, oh, this is here because of ABC. That is there because of ABC. So the tour guide leads you. The Holy Spirit is your tour guide. He has already gone into your future. He knows what will happen to you today, tomorrow, and forever. And he will guide you away from it. He will lead you away from it. He will guide you. So that you land in the place where God has destined you to be. Otherwise you miss it. That's the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 and verse 13 says that. It says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. I said he will tell you about the future. He will tell you about the future.
me give a very simple answer or illustration. Yesterday when we left here after the, you know, the, re the re rehearsals, clean up whatever, and all those kind of stuff like that. When we were driving and we got to the, we were nearing toward the motorway, the Holy Spirit said, you will have to take Tess home. But I said, oh, I mean, 10 o'clock, 10.30, we can get an Uber. So we drove on, we went through. He said, don't take that route. Just go straight and then you will take it home. I said, oh, no, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll make it. So we got there, we called an Uber. They declined the, the, the request. We went again. I tell you, we did so many round, useless rounds. Just going here, you know, we stop here, we try an Uber, it doesn't work. We go here, we try. Then he told me, but I told you, take her home. I said, okay, I will do it. Then I turned. Vroom, vroom, and we went. Then Carol said, ah, we should have done this earlier. But I didn't say anything. because I. <laughs> she said, ah, we should have done this earlier. But I didn't say anything. Because he told me, what, the moment we hit the motorway, he said, when you get to that Ashaman place, take her home. The Holy Spirit knows the future. He will tell you who you are going to marry. He will tell you what your children will become like. He will tell you where you must be for things to happen in your life. He will tell you about the future because he has already gone into your future. He knows all about you. He knows what you will become. The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, he's the one who punishes your life to become like a spiritual mirror reflecting the glory of Jesus Christ. When Jesus walked this earth, he was glorifying the Father. When Jesus left and the Holy Spirit came, he's glorifying Jesus. People of God, you must get into that relationship. You must drop into that relationship. Knowing the Holy Spirit, he won't how do you do it? He wants to have his first choice. He wants to have his first place. He wants to have the preeminence. By having room in your heart. That's what he wants. He wants to be in charge of your life. It's not going to make you feel no. There is a there is a lie from Satan that you know when you when you become too religious, you become poor. It's not true. When you become, when you know the Lord, I'm not talking about religion anyway. But when you know the Lord, when you experience koinonia, when you you experience intimacy with the Holy Spirit, you will enjoy the good life. I said the good life. I said the good life. You will enjoy the good life. Have you forgotten that your body is now the sacred temple of the spirit of holiness? That is the Holy Spirit. Who lives in you? You don't belong to yourself. No. You don't belong to yourself any longer. For the gift of God, the Holy Spirit lives inside your sanctuary. He wants his right space in your life. He doesn't want you to compete with him. He doesn't want something else to compete with him. He wants you to set him as a seal upon your heart. He wants you to take him and honor him. Because he will show you things. He will show you things that, are very, that might appear very irrelevant. But they will save you time. If I had listened to him yesterday, I would have saved some fuel. Yes. But as you go on and on and on and on, you will learn to obey. You will learn to cultivate that relationship. That he will have the right space in your heart. He's the one who can show you Jesus. You can't meet Jesus. You can meet him, yes, as your Lord and personal Savior. But that is just the first rung of the ladder. You must climb up and grow and become strong and become mature and become bold 
that you can stand and take authority. You can stand and stop the adversary. When there is crisis in your family, they can call on you. And when they call on you, they are sure you can respond. And when you respond, they know there will be an answer. Because you will do it because you have a relationship with Jesus. We would like to meet Jesus. We would like to converse with Jesus. You need to pursue him. You need to pursue the Holy Spirit. You need to come to the place where in your heart of hearts, you will tell the Holy Spirit, one thing that he loves again is repentance. There are some doctrines that teach that, well, once you repented, when you got born again, that is the end of the story. Well, it's not true. That can be it. Anytime you slip, the Holy Ghost wants you to repent. Anytime you slip, the Holy Ghost wants you to repent. And then come, and you, you'll be cleansed by the blood. And you will make it again. And you will climb again. And you will move to the next level. He's the one who can show you what is behind the veil. He's the spirit of reality. Yes. The spirit of reality. The spirit of truth. Yes, you will go through challenges. You will go through ups and downs. You will face roadblocks. But I can assure you that in all and through it all, he will guide you. He will guide you. When it looks like all hope is lost and everything is gone and you are failing and you are failing and you are collapsing, he will show up. He will show up and rescue you. There will be rescue. The Holy Spirit is a rescuer. The Holy Spirit is a deliverer. Jesus identified him as the quickening spirit. He told the disciples, it is the spirit that gives life. Without the Holy Spirit, nothing works. Without the Holy Spirit, everything is flesh. The flesh profits nothing. That's what Jesus said. It is the spirit who gives life. The quickening spirit is the Holy Spirit. And the Apostle Paul says again, if the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. He's a quickening spirit. He will make your mortal body well. He will make your mind well. He will change your perspective about issues. He will make you alive. You will begin to love Christianity. Sometimes Christianity is boring. Sometimes Christianity is like a drug. You are so tired, you wonder what kind of stuff is that? But the Holy Ghost will bring you joy. He will bring you joy. He's the quickening spirit. He's the quickening spirit. Signs and wonders from above. When you pour out your spirit on the old and the young, in the power of your breath, Holy Spirit, Rise up on your feet. 
Revelations of your love. Revelations of your love. As I look to the heavens, oh God. As I look.
You will not go home without sickness. You will not go home without burden. And I will dwell. I will dwell. In your heart. And he, he, bite, he parted the waters into two. Today you walk on dry ground. I said you walk on dry ground. Whatever waters has engulfed you, the waters will be swallowed up. Whatever waters has threatened your life, the waters will be swallowed up. Lord and 
there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will get you. Though you have not known me, that they may know that from the rising of the sun to its setting, there is none besides me. I am the Lord. There is none. Then he says, rain down you heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. Let them spring for salvation. Let them spring for healing. Let them spring for restoration. Let them spring for righteousness. And let righteousness spring up again. I, the Lord, have created it. And I will dwell. I will dwell. In your house. Forever. I will dwell. I will dwell. be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear toward me and save me. Be my rock. Be the rock of my refuge to which I will always come. In you, O oh Lord, I have taken refuge. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grabs of those who are evil. Just raise up your right hand. Whatever you want to receive from God. The reign of God is falling. You will have to receive. Just receive it by faith. Pain in your body. Emotional pain. Psychological pain. Mental pain. Physical pain. He says, I will praise you, O God, among the nations. For you are my hope and my refuge. I'm going to pray. You will receive by faith. The chains will break. The chains will break. Let, let this music be quiet. Let's make a confession. Father God, I've come before you. It is in you that I've taken refuge. It is in you that I've taken refuge. I've come and you will not put me to shame. I've brought my needs before you. And I've brought my heart before you. I surrender. Tonight, Tonight, as your servant prays for me, prays for me I, connect into the supernatural, I connect into the supernatural every pain, every pain emotional, emotional, psychological, psychological mental, mental, spiritual, spiritual physical, physical will, break will break in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Every captivity will be turned loose. And I'll be free. And I'll be free. For if the sun shall make me free. For if the sun shall make me free. I shall be free indeed. I shall be free indeed. Whatever the pain is, whatever the sickness is. Whatever the pain is. As I lay my hand on it, Father. As I lay my hand on it. Father, and the prayer of faith is said. And the prayer of faith is said. I receive. I receive. In Jesus' name.
Father God, Father God. Every, ancient curse, every ancient curse, every ancient altar, every ancient altar that, is a that is putting a demand on my life, on my life because of something that was done wrong. Every ancient altar, every ancient altar, every ancient pledge, every ancient, pledge, every ancient, covenant, every ancient covenant that is still speaking, that is still speaking tonight, tonight. I come by a higher covenant. I come by a higher covenant. I come by a higher covenant. The blood of Jesus. And by my own will, and by my own will I, renounce I renounce every covenant, every covenant with the dead. With the dead, with the dead, and with death, and with death, I renounce, I renounce every, covenant every covenant with family altars, with family, altars, with family, covenants, with family covenants, with family shrines. With family shrines. I, renounce, I renounce, not by my might, by my might but by the power of God, by the power and in the name of Jesus, of I, decree I decree that today, that today a supernatural work, a supernatural work by the Holy Ghost. By the Will be, will be done in my life. In my life. Every, pledge Every pledge that I have made, that I have made or that someone, that someone else made on my behalf, on my behalf. Today, today I declare, I, declare I, boldly I boldly confess I don't want it. I don't, want I don't, have, it. A I don't have a part. I cancel it. I, cancel it. I, take, myself I take myself out. I renounce it. I, renounce I reject it. it. I reject I refuse, I refuse it. I come for a better covenant. I come for a better covenant. May the God of peace, May the God of as, it is written, as it is written, who brought back from the dead, who back from the dead my, Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd, that great shepherd of, the sheep, of the sheep, through the blood, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, the everlasting make, me complete, make me complete, make me whole, make me, whole, make me, fulfilled, make me fulfilled, make me complete, make me, complete, make me satisfied, make in every good work, in every good work, in every good work, Father, like David, Father like David who, started a fight who started a fight with words, with words. I, pulled down every stronghold. I pulled down every stronghold, I throw down every stronghold, throw down every, stronghold. Every, wicked every wicked altar. Today, Today tonight, tonight I, declare, I declare, I pour Nana asthma. I, asthma. I come in the name of the Lord. I not in the name of man, but in the name of the Lord of hosts. And I cancel, and I cancel, and I set aside, and I nullify in Jesus' name. The words that I speak, they are spirits, they are life. In the name of Jesus, I create by my words restoration. I create. By my words, hope. I create by my words healing from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. From the crown of my head, touch your toes to the soles of touch it. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I declare, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, spirit of the living God. I submit again. I choose your way. I choose your way. I renounce every wrong way. And I come with all my heart. Whatever has been challenging me. Like Goliath challenged the Israelites. Whatever has been defiling me. Whatever has been denying me. Whatever has been humiliating me. Whatever has been challenging me, whatever has been putting me to shame, today I declare by your word, I won't see that Goliath again. I won't see that Goliath again. Every Goliath in my life, every Goliath standing behind me, I command you to leave. 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 Every family Goliath. Every community Goliath. Every workplace Goliath. I command you to leave. Every marriage Goliath. 
Every marriage Goliath, I command you to leave. Every academic Goliath, I command you to leave. Come on, begin to pray. Just go ahead and begin to pray. Just begin to pray. Every Goliath is living. Every Goliath is living. Every Goliath is living. Every Goliath behind you, in your office, in your marriage, in your community, in your workplace, in your ministry, in your finances, that has been doubting you, that has been testing you, that has been hurting you, that Goliath is living. Father, I take authority. Now listen to me. Go ahead, play. I take authority. Satan, I bind you. I paralyze your works. I refer you to the cross. I refer you to the empty tomb. I refer you to the cross where the sicknesses were nailed. Where the problems were nailed. And I got out free. Tonight, I declare, if the sun shall set me free, I shall be free indeed. And I am free. I refuse to look at the symptoms. I refuse to listen to others. I look at the word. And I look at the prayer. Yes, I am well. I am well. My heart is well. My heart is well. In Jesus' name. Just raise up your hand and if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Maybe you, you are backslidden. Don't be shy. I'm not going to ask you to come forward here. But wherever you stand, just raise your hand. I'm going to pray with you. You know, you know, you, you know if, you, if you fall down today and you die, you're not going to make it to heaven. Because you've missed it. God, is, God loves you. He's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking. Once you open the door, Jesus will come in. He will fellowship with you. He will sup with you. Your life will be different. Say, Father God, Father. I come before you. I recognize I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. So I have come before you. I've asked for help. Forgive me. Wash me in the blood. Cleanse me in the blood. Make me whole. I accept you as my Lord. Let's repeat it. I accept you as my Lord. Let's say it again. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Tonight, I'm yours and you are mine. Jesus, I'm yours and you are mine. I love you. I bless you. I'm healed. I'm well. The chains have, have been broken. The curses have been reversed. I believe it. 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 Trade in your life for my offenses, for my redemption. You carried all the blame. Perfection. Sow a 
seeds and I tell God that curse has been reversed. My only desire. My only desire. And so my sole ambition. My sole ambition. Is to love you just Come on. So I seed in the faith. My bed in the rain. My bed in the rain. You are telling God, as I drop that seed, I am taking what is mine. My only desire, I take that one. I take it. 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 My bed in the rain. My bed in the rain. My life forgiven. What about cursed? Whatever is following you, whatever is chasing you, the chains have been broken. The chains have been broken. My only desire. The chains have been broken. That's all I'm missing. That Goliath, that Goliath, that Goliath in your family. Today we succumb. When are we now? Give the Lord a round of applause. Put your hands together for the Lord. Why not in love? Put your hands together for the see your smile. The champion has been defeated. And Jesus, that's what Jesus said when he was speaking and, all, and the Israelites were so enthused and excited about Solomon and greater than Solomon is here. Something has changed in your life. Something has happened to your life. You are walking here with a testimony. You are walking here as a miracle. You are walking here because the champion has been defeated. Uh, oh, say.
I think about, I don't know whether it was three years back or a year, a year ago, I can't recall. But I entered into the presence of God. And for about three months, I thought I was, I was crazy. I was so happy. I was just, you know, nothing could move me. I was just excited because I entered into the presence of God. Joy unspeakable has overtaken you. Joy unspeakable. This joy will live with you. And you ask yourself, but what happened? You know, and, and I remember in those days, I would lie down in bed and I would sleep like a log. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this service. The champion from God was defeated by David. The champion in our workplaces. The champion in our marriages. The champion in our academic career. The champion over our finances. The champion in our communities. The champions in our families that resisted us and prevented your people from going forward. Today, they will not see him again. They will not see him again. The same way the Israelites never saw the Egyptians again. They will not see them again. Because we have brought deliverance. You have brought healing. You have reversed curses. You have canceled. You have exalted Jesus. The Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. The one who holds the keys of life and death. The one who was and is and is to come. The evermore and evermore. From everlasting to the eternities of eternity. The one who reigns. The king of kings. The one who rose up again from the dead. The one who conquered death. You conquered death. You conquered death. In Greek mythology, Hercules said he could defeat death. And Greek mythology says he went to meet Hades and Hades conquered him. But Jesus took the keys from Hades. A greater than Hercules is here. A greater than Charles Atlas is here. A greater than Goliath is here. A greater than somebody is here. His name is Jesus. We would like to converse with him. We would like to meet him. Some of you are worried, how are you going to get home? You will get home safely. Anybody who will attempt to rob you or to do harm to you, is dead. I said what? Is dead. You will live here and go in the company of angels. You will live here and go in an army with an army of angels. The Lord is with you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face and his countenance to shine before you. The Lord be merciful to you. The Lord be merciful to you. The Lord extend your reach. The Lord increase your passion. That you will relentlessly pursue him. That you will be like the Greeks who came and said, we know him from a distance. We want to have intimacy. The Holy Spirit will help you. May the Lord, may you, may the Lord answer you when you call the Lord in the day of trouble. May the Lord respond when you call to him. May the Lord be a wall of fire around you. May the wall surround you as the mountains surround Jerusalem and they are strong. May the Lord surround you with his strength. May the Lord keep you in his pavilion under his wings. For he's a refuge. He's a shelter. He's a protector. May the Lord establish you. May the Lord give you joy. May the Lord give you peace. May the Lord wipe away your tears. You have stopped crying. I said you have stopped crying. I said you have stopped crying. 
I didn't say you will stop crying. I said you have stopped crying. You have stopped crying. Yes. The God of all comfort is able. Every trap that was in your family to take care of you this year has been cancelled. You will not die before your time. Your husband will not die before his time. Your wife will not die before her time. Your Amen. brothers and sisters will not die before their time. Amen. Your parents will not die before their time. Your friends will not die before their time. Your siblings will not die before their time. For I, the Lord, have spoken. That says the Lord. I, the Lord, I have spoken. It's a prophetic word. You will not die. You will live to give your testimony. Just log on to Life Center. Share your testimony. As others have been doing when we're ministering on Sundays, we tell the, the whole world. Your, your, your back ache has been removed. The pain in your breast was taken away. Your neck. You came here with a neck problem. You could turn now easily. Praise God. Let me see my hand. I see somebody came with a neck problem. I, I see a miracle. Let me see your hand quickly. You came with a neck, neck problem. Praise God. I see your hand somewhere quickly. Your neck was, you know, you couldn't just move your neck. But you came in. God has ministered to your neck. Come on. Raise up your hand. Praise God. Don't delay. Don't delay. Don't delay. Don't delay. Don't delay. Come on. Come on. I'm going to close the service. With a back pain. With a weight on your shoulders I spoke about. I'm taking the testimonies now. Let me see my hand. With a pain. No, I just want to see the hand. Just wave your hand. Praise God. Just wave your hand. Yes, I see hands over there. You know, and I spoke about pains in the back. You couldn't bend. You couldn't bend. That has been. I spoke about pain in the breast. Let me see my hand. Pain in the breast. Pain in the breast. Yes, I see some woman over there waving her hand. Pain in the breast. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And I spoke about someone with nightmares and nightmares and nightmares. And you never enjoy sleep. I see breakthrough. Let me see my hand. I see a hand over there. I see a hand over there. Yes. The chains have been broken. The chains have been broken. And there's one last one I, I see in the spirit is that, you know, your parents just told you that, well, they've gone to the village to do a money on your behalf. You're a Christian and you're wondering, why should they do a money on your behalf? But you're, you're in that boat um, to say, well, I don't want their money. I don't want those, those things to be done. So you kept it to yourself. And it's been haunting you. It's been haunting you. Let every eye be closed. Let every eye be closed. It's been haunting you. But the chains have been broken. Let every eye be closed. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a serving ministry. Let every eye be closed. Just raise your hand if you are the one I'm speaking to. Just raise your hand wherever you are. Don't feel shy. Yes, I see one hand up. Don't let every eye be closed. And Father, I take authority over that spirit in the name of Jesus. Over that spirit that has been covenanted to this lady. I cancel it in Jesus' name. And today I speak liberty. If you are raising your hand, raise it well because I'm praying a prayer of faith. I cancel it in the name of Jesus. I cancel that covenant. You will not take it. I rubbish it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. We've closed the service. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Give the Lord a mighty round of applause. Amen. What do we say to Baba? I didn't hear you. Hallelujah. Papa, God bless you. God bless you indeed. We thank God. And you can get this message on YouTube and on uh, Facebook. So when you live here, you can go back and go through the message again and take once again, what belongs to you. Hallelujah. From you can also receive more of these faith messages. Our Papa is a prophetic worshiper. He can't stop. Hallelujah. Amen. The wind and waves. Up your hands. Yeah, my heart surrender. 
Come on, give me a round of applause. Tomorrow, Green Pastures Temple, you have your service from 10 a.m. 10 a.m. to 12 noon. So please take note of that, Green Pastures Temple. And the biggest announcement is that now our Papa is more available to you than ever. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I thought you would clap. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Our Papa is now available in the office on weekdays all through. So if you want to see him, you just need to call. He will arrange and he will make all the time for you. You will have your time with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So you have your flyers. You can see the contacts on it. Or you can call the Life Center contacts. You know them. I wish the projection team can project those contacts for us. Just call, the booking is done, and then you come, and then you share with him whatever you want. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. We know you've been blessed. We know you've been blessed. You can be a partner to this ministry. You can be, and God will bless you the more. For more information, just call the Life Center lines, and you will get them. God bless you. So say somebody, say to somebody by you, God bless you. And say, Papa, God bless you. So say to three people, God bless you. And tell them we have closed. But follow the message. Yes, follow the message. Amen. God bless you. So we've closed. Papa has blessed us already. Amen. You see, you see, you want more. You don't want to get up. Hallelujah. Amen. No, we have closed.